are you doing today it's quite bright it's quite sunny weather wise here but we have been informed that the rest of the country will possibly be getting a heat wave and we might be getting a storm over the weekend so i hope wherever you are the weather is nice i hope you are well and thank you so much for joining me today i'm natalie this is totally beads and we are going to be making some lovely earrings for you today so we're doing um little tassel earrings they look like this i'll take you down on the mat and show you them on the website shortly um they're really straightforward to make and you can um change these up i think you're going to make about four in the kits today so if you wanted you could just have them short if you didn't want the tassels and then you could add the tassels as extra pairs if you want just using that jump ring um we've got a slightly uh thinner gauge jump ring that i'm I don't always use because I'm going to be adding that back through one of the lovely little spacer beads. So we've got six lovely colours for you today. There's three in a gold colourway and there's three in the silver as well. So drop me a comment. Let me know where you're watching from. Are you watching me on YouTube? Are you watching me on Natalie Pattern Jewellery? Are you watching me on Totally Beads? Um, I have try to add uh, subtitles and audio to my page. So if um, if it's some if something you would prefer to have that audio then as soon as i have um finished the live i'll go back into my um youtube account and i'll add those subtitles on and then if you speak a different language or you've got a hearing impairment or you just prefer to read along with the instructions then you can do that that way so drop me a comment let me know how you're doing today before i take you over to the website we've got rachel in she says it's a wet barrow it was raining here this morning it looks quite bright but then when the sun goes in it goes a bit dark and gloomy again so not the best weather but i'm hoping you all had a really lovely Easter. It's been a little bit new, hasn't it, really? Um, good morning to Tina. She's in Austin in Texas. So hello to you. Good morning to Trish. She says, good morning, Natalie and all. The sun is trying to come out. I agree. Here is trying. It's looking bright now, but we'll see. Uh, good morning to Ida, who's in Durham. Good morning to Judith. Oh, she says we must have had snow last night, but it's just rain now. Where about are you watching from, Judith? The weather's just everything, an absolute mixed bag, depending on where you are in the country, the country being the UK, of course. Uh, good morning to Yolanda. Uh, she says, happy Friday from Michigan. She's on YouTube and I'm early today. We should be at 10 a.m., but our clocks have sprang forward, so I think that might be catching a few people off. So we have spring forward, where the clocks go forward by an hour, and we have fall, autumn back, and that goes back an hour. So, yeah, if you are watching um, in Michigan or anywhere other than uh, where our time zone is, then, yeah, we will probably be early. So might catch some of the Americans off and a lot of other people today. So I hope you can find me. Um, there's a slow connection. The connection's been really weird this morning. Um, I've been getting feedback despite having my, my sound turned down on one of my cameras. Um, my hands were going slow when I was putting things down on the mat. It looks okay now, but please bear with me. Uh, good morning to Tracy. She says good morning to everybody. Jan's in as well. She says it's a kind of sunny Sudbury. Good morning to Judith again. She's in Scotland, West Lothian. Oh, okay. Uh, you had snow. Yeah, I think Scotland's getting the storm quite bad, isn't it? Um, and anywhere on the west, I believe. Um, apparently there's no Facebook again today. I don't know why it says I'm streaming. Let me just check. Oh, have we got that time zone thing? Saying it's unable to connect on. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. I really don't know. Um, I'll. Um, I was going to switch it off and switch it on again, but now it's just completely disappeared. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It also says that we're not due to go live until five minutes past 10, which is probably now. I don't know what is going on with these settings at the moment. I've tried changing them um, and 
yeah it's saying we're unable to connect on the totally beads facebook page but then it's also telling me that i am on totally beads on youtube so i don't know what's going on with facebook um let me try clicking that one yeah i don't know what's going on please come and find me if you can't find me um i'm on totally beads on youtube and i'm also on my page which is natalie pattern jewelry uh, so thank you for finding me if you are here yolanda says it's four minutes past five in the morning um tina says she's happened to forget to change the uh my alarm not the clock i my my phone and everything i live by my phone so that does it all automatically for me my car isn't right um the clock in the car so i need to i usually fiddle with it and then by the time i'm like i, I manage to change it the clocks go back or forward again <laughs> sometimes i think i'll just leave it and then i'll be early or late good morning to edward uh, it's 2 a.m in california so she's still counting that as thursday um that's and j6787 um good morning to tracy and stoke and trent good morning to elizabeth who's found us on youtube and camille's found us i honestly do not know what's going on i can tell by the numbers we don't have half as many people in as usual uh good morning to catherine who's in a snowy glen roads um yeah i honestly don't know what's going on with the sentence but i do apologize for that There's not much i can do i have tried it i check before we go live that it's all ready to go and then it, it's not <laughs> let me take you over to the website and then we'll get making it's a quite easy make today so we are on totallybeads.co.uk i'll go back out of this so you can find us if you head over to the web page it's totallybeads.co.uk you can find our video tutorials here this is where we put all of these lovely kits together so i put a load of stuff together laura does and does kitty we pick pretty colors for you um, and then we make along so if you want to make along with exactly what i'm using you can buy your kits here they are four pounds 99 pence today and it makes four pairs of earrings and as i say you can um if you've got extra ear wires you can change these up and you could make extra pairs if you wanted to have um just the little kind of motifs or the dangles separate you could totally do that they are all the colors for you today they're all £4.99. So we've got three on the gold colourway and three on the silver. So this is the buttermilk for you. This is on the gold. So you'll get um, gold coloured earrings and wire and your jump rings and spacers and chain. And we've got these lovely little buttermilk pearls. They are glass pearls and they are four millimetre rounds. So they're dainty and small and pretty. The wire that I'm using today is a copper um, wire. It's colour coated. So it's colour coated in either the gold or the silver, depending on which colour you choose from. And that is a 0 0.4 millimetre wire which I can't remember off the top of my head what gauge it is. I want to say 26 gauge, but I'm, I'm just guessing at that because I always forget I, I, I work in millimetres. Um, so it's a 0 0.4 millimetre wire. So you're going to get your pearls, your chain, and um, the chain's really pretty. You're going to get your copper wire, your earring hooks. We're using some acrylic spacer beads and they're all dainty too. I think they're four millimeter as well. Um, and then you're gonna get a jump ring. Now the jump rings that I'm using is a 0.7 by eight. That is your outer diameter. You could use a smaller jump ring, but the gauge needs to be a little bit thinner. So usually I'd use a six by one um, outer diameter kind of measurement. The one millimeter wire I think would be too thick to go through that spacer. So you can see there, I'm just hanging it through that little spacer bead. So that's why I've gone from the, for the 0 0.7 by eight. Um, so you could use a smaller size, but make sure it's a thinner gauge to get through. Um, but if you get the kits, it's all included. If you wanna have a little scroll down, you can see some of the materials that I'm using in this kit. Um, they are the lovely buttermilk colored pearls in this one. And they are four pounds 99 pence and that makes up four pairs of earrings i haven't done the maths on that but i think that's that's a very um 
good price for a pair of earrings. They'd be nice, I think, if you wanted to gift these um, or if you wanted to um, sell them, you can do that. You could put them on a little craft fair or on your web page or whatever you've got. Um, and if you want to multi-buy the kit, you can and you could mix up the colours as well if you wanted. You might want to do um, different coloured pearls kind of in the centre. This one here is a lovely caramel colour again that's on the gold for you and you can scroll down there and you can see what type of chain I'm using um, it's a four, uh, three by four millimetre chain it's got a lovely oval pattern on it which means um, it's oval in shape and then it's got like lovely little kind of etched markings in it it's really nice um, again you could use any chain any chain you wanted because it's going to fit through that smaller um, jump ring I would just make sure it was well, I'd say dainty, but you, you can do whatever you want. You can also change the lengths on this as well. So if you didn't want them to sit quite as long, um, you could do a tapered. What I've done is I've got a longer chain in the centre. So I've got um, two links, two chain lengths on the outside with 13 links and then one in the middle with 14, just that one extra. If you wanted, though, you could maybe taper it, like feather it, so you could have it going like shorter, to uh longer on the sides or you could keep it all the same length or do whatever you wish with it you could also add little um pearls little wrapped loop pearls onto the bottom of that as well if you wanted to you could do whatever you like um this is just to give you a little bit of inspiration and um you know nice quick make this is your lilac so this is on your silver again if you wanted to um, multi-buy the kits you could always change that over as well so if you wanted the buttermilk but you wanted the buttermilk on the silver rather than the gold you could do that i think they'd make quite nice um wedding earrings i suppose with wedding season approaching um but i think they're um I don't know, they feel kind of summery and spring-like to me. And the gold, maybe a little bit more Christmassy or kind of wintery, but the silver colours, I don't know, they just seem a bit spring and summer-like to me, which I'm longing for. So this is your lilac here. Again, £4.99 for your kits, and that is making four pairs of earrings up. This is your olive, which is my favourite, I think, today on the gold. I'll probably do um, one of each. I'll do a gold and I'll do a silver if we've got enough time. We should do um, to everything you need in your kit. If you want to scroll down and have a little look, you can do. Um, oh, it's the three millimetre um, acrylic rounds I'm using, not four. They are slightly smaller than the pearls. So the pearls are four millimetre. The acrylic round spaces are three millimetres apologize for that I was just guessing it's been a long time since I put these together hopefully I'll remember what to do uh, this is your gorgeous powder blue so it's a lovely light blue color really 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 pretty very much like these don't know what's going on with that colored background um I haven't edited that photo <laughs> but as you can see here they 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 just the beads they've got the white space behind them uh, this one here is the royal blue so two pairs of blue but this is very very different it's much darker very pretty um and if you want to have a little look again your components are down there so you can see what chain we're using and this wire is it's copper but it is colored in a color remain color um so it, it doesn't lose its color um too easily you don't see much of it anyway just a little bit at that the top of that wrapped loop and then we've got the acrylic uh, silver round spacers and your lovely four millimetre pearls in this case is the royal blue so let me know which ones do you like the best are you more of a gold color wearer a silver color wearer maybe you're a rose gold I've not put any rose gold colors uh, ways together today at the moment um, I like rose gold I'm really drawn to rose gold but I'll wear I'll wear a real mix, it just depends. Um, so let me have a little look what I've missed in the comments. Um, Carol says Facebook won't load. I know it's pain in the, um, what's it? Sharon says, good morning, creative bead nears. Gone windy and overcast as if it's gonna rain. The sun was out in Castle Donington. Yeah, it's gone overcast here now. It's it's a mixed bag. Good morning to Karen. Um, Mina says, good morning from a wet Leicester. And yeah, we can't find you on uh, Facebook. It's not working. Mina says she loves this color. Which color, which one do you like the most of? Um, 
Camille's popped in to say hello. She's going for a Chinese dim sum lunch in Bristol. Have a lovely, lovely time. Uh, good morning to uh, you. She says she's going to stock up on Chinese goodies and staples. Yummy. Mina says, thank you, Natalie, as I'm going to make these and um, the best uh, for a wedding fair on the 21st of April. 21st of April is my wedding anniversary, so I'm going to be sending you extra extra love and luck for a wedding fair on that date okay let's stop chatting and let's get down on the mat i hope people have been able to find me numbers are still a lot lower than usual so for those that are here congratulations well done for finding me um so here we've got this is the caramel i think so you can see really pretty lovely little dangly chain tassel and this is where the camera goes fuzzy as well doesn't it brilliant We've got this lovely kind of olivey green colour, which I think looks beautiful on the gold. Um, we've got the buttermilk as well, which you could do on the gold or the silver. Tina says the olive is very, very pretty. She's not seen that colour much. I'm really drawn to that today, Tina. I don't know why, but this is this is this is a bit of me today. Um, Carrie says good morning from South Florida. Hello to you. This is the light blue that we've got. And then this is the royal blue. So they're both blue, but they're both very different. And they're on the silver. And then we've got that lilac too, which is a little bit pinky. <clears throat> Mina's loving the buttermilk colours. I think they're very wedding, aren't they? Uh, Camille, have a lovely time. Enjoy. OK, so if you wanted to, you could just make the little motif. You could also join these together if you wanted and you could make you know, like a necklace or a bracelet with those little parts. You could join them together. You could just have one in the center. You could make it as a little pendant. You could do whatever you wanted. And you could also, if you just wanted to attach your jump ring and your chain from the ear hook, you could do that as well. Maybe you want to add some little pearls onto the bottom of these. There's lots of different things that you could do. This is just a little example of how I've put them together. So in order to start, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 30 centimetres, um, which is about 12 inches of my wire. So we'll do we'll do the gold first. So I'm using a 0.4 millimetre wire. So it's strong, but it's it's, you know, thin. And I'm just going to cut about 30 centimetres or 12 inches i'm pointing this out just in case anyone's watching along and the subtitles aren't working at the moment if the captions aren't on um, then you should be able to see now you can cut longer if you wish um obviously for a pair of earrings you're going to need double that so you're going to need about 60 centimeters for a pair but all i'm doing is i'm just making sure i've got enough that i don't run out um, so I'm cutting about 30 centimetres, which is 12 inches. In terms of tools, I'm going to use two pairs of pliers, which I'm going to be able to open the jump ring on. I'm doing all of this mainly using my fingers. Um, but if you've got a pair of chain nose, you might just want to help yourself kind of guide that wire through at times. I'm also going to use some round nose pliers or um, bail step pliers just to make a little wrapped loop at the end and some wire cutters. That's all I need in regards to my tools. So I'm going to start off getting my pearls out. For uh, one um, earring, you're going to need 12 pearls and four spacers. So obviously doubling that up, you'd need eight spacers and uh, 24 pearls for a pair. So I'm just using these lovely little four mil. Um, I'm just going to cut open my strand. I'm going to use the caramel colour for now. And I'm going to get a couple of my uh, spacer beads out ready to go as well. Don't need many. Four for an earring. So I'll just pour a few out there. Good morning, Joanne. She says she's going to struggle to chat as the type size is so tiny on YouTube device. These look nice. I don't know what's going on with all the tech. I'm so sorry you're not here on, on Facebook and I don't know how to change it. It tells me we're on, but we're clearly not. Um, so I've taken my wire 
and what I'm going to do is I'm just kind of bringing up the edges a little bit just so I can find that center and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two pearls on and let them fall into the center I'm then going to add a spacer so I'm just sliding it on to the wire and then I'm going to add another pearl so this will be kind of like the pattern or the order in which I add onto the wire if you can see here so pearl pearl spacer pearl and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the wire back through and I'm going to make this first little loop if I bring that one into shot you can see here and what I want is I want the spacer to be at the bottom of that kind of corner so when I bring back that tail through I'm going to bring back the first pearl or through the first pearl which is in the two so not this one here this one here which is basically the first one I've put on so I'm taking the wire I'm sorry that my fingers are covering it over at the moment and I'm just going to go back through that one pearl there and then I'm going to bring it up so I'm going to give it a little pull on each side but I want to try and kind of get it which would be in the middle so I've got an even amount of wire really on both sides so I'm just going to draw it through slowly and as I pull that together I've got that little spacer at the bottom if you do it and the spacer is at the side you've brought it back through the wrong pearl so you want to bring it back through the first pearl which is in the, the, the two if that makes sense now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add onto this side you can you can do either way it's a really straightforward make but I like to do it this way so I'm then going to do the same. I'm going to add two pearls. And then going to add the spacer. And then I'm going to add another pearl. And I'm going to bring it back through the first pearl I added on, which is in the group of two. So I'm going to bring it kind of around the back. So I'm using that same tail end that they're threaded onto. I'm ignoring this tail at the moment. I'm just going to bring that through. Now, this is why it's nice to use this gauge of wire, because it's nice and uh, small enough to get through. So it's going through there. And then as I pull this wire through, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to position that pearl close to the other one. So when I pull that little loop, nice and tight and my beads are sitting next to each other and again that spacer is now on the corner on the outer side now I'm going to move over to this side which I haven't added anything onto at the moment and we're going to do exactly the same so I'm going for two pearls and you could change the size of this up. If you wanted them bigger, you could use larger beads. I'm then going to use the spacer. And then add on my pearl. So pearl, pearl, spacer, pearl. I'm now going to go back. So I'm bringing it basically kind of around this way. Just so I can go through that first pearl again only the one and if you want to use your tools to grip onto it you can do and then just as i'm pulling this through again i'm going to push that pearl down close to the others must have a little kink in the wire because it's gone a little bit it's gone a little bit wonky there isn't it let me let me back up and do it again don't want to snap my wire but i've uh, i brought it back in a loop when i haven't brought it round properly they are straightforward you just have to know what you're doing let's get a little bit of purchase on this i'm not going to be able to get that back out now am i come on 
help if I was pulling on the right side of the wire. <laughs> if you make a mistake, which we all do at times, just straighten that back up. So let's try again. And make a loop. Bringing it through. Push that bead down. There you go, that's better. And as I pull it in tight, that's made a little loop. Now, if it needs a little bit of movement, because I didn't push that pill right down, there's a little bit of a gap in it. So if you want, you can just loosen it up. And kind of push it down with your fingers you could just give it a little twist a little manipulate of that wire because i want it to sit like this so it's kind of like a heart shape and again that's a design that you could do if you want to have the little heart shape so i've got those two wires coming out at the middle now now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add one pearl onto one end whichever end you want the left or the right And I'm going to bring back the other tail end and that's going to go back through the same pearl in the opposite direction. And then I'm just going to, again, draw them in. So I do a little bit on one side, a little bit on the other, just to kind of get it in the middle. Now you can see I've really pulled on that wire. I've scraped it in and out those beads, trying to get it back into position when I accidentally made a little mistake. Um, and the coating on that wire is still very much gold. Um, so it's a nice, it's a nice wire to use. So I've now got this kind of little heart shape. I'm going to add an extra pearl on to each end. So a pearl onto one side and a pearl onto the other. like so and then to make this last little point i'm going to take another one of my spacer beads and i'm going to bring the end back through in the opposite direction again like we did with that pearl so spacer on bring in both ends of the wire through and then as i draw that down that's made that little motif and again if you need to you can just kind of play about with it and reposition it but what i want is those little spaces on the corners so it's a diamond shape but if you look at it this way you know it's a little square there you go and they're all on the corners now i'm just going to pinch these wires up together so i pinch them just above that spacer and I'm going to start twisting the wire. I want to kind of make um, one twisted end just as a little kind of wrap loop. So I've splayed the wires out a little bit. I'm holding it between my thumb and my finger. And the wire is in between my thumb and finger. And I'm just twisting. So I'm moving my fingers, these fingers and thumbs. Thumbs? Finger and thumb is slightly moving backwards as I twist with my other hand just to bring that wire twisted together. And as I'm doing that, what's happening is that twist is moving along towards my hand. It's not just constantly twisting here. Now, you don't need much of a length of that. Um, in this case, I've done about two inches, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to be cutting most of that off. I'm going to take my round nose pliers or my bail step pliers. Now, if I want that loop to be exactly the same on each of my earrings, um, all I could do is I could make a visual note or I could mark on with a pen where I'm going to turn that loop. Or if I use my bail step pliers, which are these, my six step pliers, I'd use the smaller and then I know each time it's going to be the same because I'm using the same one. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose where about I want to bring that loop over because your round nose tape, uh, pliers are tapered so they get smaller at the end and wider towards the hand. I'm going to put them here so it's probably um, a couple of millimetres up and I'm just going to bend that wire over 
the top and then reposition my the jaws on my pliers so a little bit of focus it's in this position now and then i'm going to bring that all the way around reposition my hand again so what's happened is i've got that little bit of space between the bead and the loop now i am before i'm going to do this just reposition that a little bit because it's not sitting directly on top of that bead and i want it to sit straight so it's not a little bit wonky i'm then going to put my round nose pliers back in and i'm just going to wrap that tail end round as one wire so i'm just wrapping round to fill that space between the loop and the bead now you can use your tools if you want to i've just used my fingers because it's a nice thin gauge of wire then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my cutters and i'm going to cut off just the tail end of the wire so you can see i had a lot left over but because i'm bringing that through the beads i wanted to make sure i had enough i wasn't kind of fiddling around with it and then going to take my pliers and i'm going to tuck in see the little end there where i've cut it oh it's fuzzy um all i'm going to do when i do tuck this bit in is I'm going to make sure I'm not putting any pressure on this spacer bead because the spacer bead is acrylic. So if I push down with my tools really hard, I could snap that bead. I just want to tuck the little tail end of the wire in so it doesn't catch on anything. And that is basically my earring. All I'm going to do now is add the jump ring onto the bottom and add those chain lengths as well. Now, when it comes to your chain lengths, Again, you can do whatever you like. I've cut um, 13 links on the outside one, which is approximately three centimetres, um, which is what, an inch? Is that an inch? Uh, no, it's over an inch. It's about an inch and a half. Um, and I'm going to add that on the outside. And then I want one in the middle which is slightly longer. So I've just put 14 chain links on the middle one. And then I've done the same on the outer side there, which is 13 links. So it will be slightly staggered. However, if you wanted to, you could make your earring so you've got um, shorter, longer and longer again. And then on the other earring, you could do the same. So they would kind of taper in or taper out depending on which which one you put in what ear, if that makes sense. Um, you could make these all one length. You could make them much shorter. It's entirely up to you. I'll measure out how long the earring is um, that I've made when I've, when I've done it. And you can see if you want them smaller, you can do. So I'm going to take my jump ring. As I say, the jump ring is a 0.7 by 8 millimeter outer diameter. So that's the circumference. But you can see there it is a smaller, slightly thinner gauge. Um, if I use a 1 mil, I'm not going to get it through that little spacer at the end. So I'm just going to open up. You will see the way it's cut is an overlap there. So I'm just going to make sure that when I open it, I don't want to distort that shape but I want to make sure that it closes. So I'm just going to reposition it. And then going to add my chain. So I'm going to open it up just a little bit, not too much, just a couple of millimetres. Um, and I'm always going to open that jump ring towards me or away from me, never outwards. And that way it's not going to kind of not only change the, the shape, but also it will eventually weaken um, the jump ring and I won't ever be able to get that fully kind of circle close on it it's going to end up distorting it so I'm always opening it towards me or away from me um, I'm going to add on the short chain or the shorter chain in this case but you can do whatever you want so 13 links then one with 14 links if I've counted correctly and another one with the 13 links So if you can see, if I can hold that up, obviously gravity will, will show better. When I hold it flat, you can't see it quite as well. This one in the middle is just ever so tiny, a uh, little bit longer. 
And Tracy says, seen a tip using a crimp tool to tuck in the wire. Oh, that is a good idea, yeah. As long as um, you don't catch that acrylic bead, you should be fine. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the jump ring and I'm gonna slide it through that very bottom corner bead of that little spacer. And then I'm closing up by just taking it back and making sure those ends are fully flush. And then I'm gonna bring my E-ring so the opening of the jump ring will be hidden inside of that little acrylic bead. All I need to do now is take my ear wire, give it a little flip open, open it like I would a jump ring, attach on and close over. And I have my earring done. Now the good thing about this is to make a matching pair of earrings, just follow exactly the same instructions because your beads that you're using are gonna be the same size. Um, as long as you cut your chain lengths the same, you're going to have the same matching pair of earrings. Um, quite often, um, when you're making earrings, it's hard to get that mirror image symmetry. But if you're doing a pair in a style like this, it's really easy to get it to match. As I say, you could use a smaller jump ring if you wanted to, um, as long as it's thin enough to go through that acrylic bead or whatever space you're using, you'll be good. So these are quite long. These are three inches in length, all um, in centimetres, about eight centimetres. But again, you could cut smaller lengths of chain if you wanted to. Um, in terms of how I cut the chain, because I had my chain cut ready to go, I will get the chain that's in my kit and I tend to either measure it out with a ruler or I will um, use just counting of the link. So I will count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 or however many links that I want. And then I'm just going to open it. It's not a soldered chain in your kit. Um, so they do have openings just like your jump ring. I'm going to find that. I'm just going to open it up. I'm going to just open it enough so I can get the other side off. And then I'm going to close it up. I just make sure that I've closed it properly. Or you can discard the link that you've opened if you don't feel it's secure enough. So that's literally just how I would cut the lengths of my chain. Should we do another one in the silver? It works exactly the same way. Um, but hopefully I won't make any mistakes this time and we've still got quite a little bit of time to go. So again, I'm using the 0.4 millimetre wire. I'm going to cut about 12 inches or 30 centimetres. Um, doesn't matter if you use longer. I wouldn't really use that much smaller because I think it just gets a little bit fiddly. If you want to straighten the wire out, it's got any kinks I'm just going to run that through my fingers I'm not using my my wire straighteners because it's it's fairly straight as it is I only tend to bend it up a little bit just so I can kind of find that center but it doesn't matter too much um, I'm then going to get my pearls this time I'm going to use that lovely kind of light powder blue so I'm going to pull a few of those out and a couple of my spacers Oh, Francis, don't worry about being a bit late. Um, Mina says the chain looks lovely. It's a really, really lovely chain. Um, on your silver, it's exactly the same um, in terms of size. It's got those little kind of etched markings on it, which just means it's going to kind of give a little bit of a twinkle. And we like that. So we're going to do, um, I like that anyway. I like a bit of sparkle. I am a magpie. Um, speaking of which, I've got two lovely magpies nesting in my garden, in my tree. I've been watching them build a nest for the last, uh, well, week or so. Started feeding them and we, we well, we're coming up with a name for them. We're going for uh, Chili and Bandit, I think, at the moment, which is from a programme that we like very much. Um, okay, so two pearls. Then the spacer. And then the pearl. I'm going to bring back one end and I'm going to go through the first pearl I added on 
which is the pearl next to the other pearl, not the spacer. I'm going to give it a little pull. So I've kind of got it in the center of that wire and my spacer is down on the bottom. And then going to add two pearls. So you can see this is a really, really quick make. Um, you can make a pair of earrings, I would say, in about 10, 15 minutes. Obviously, everybody's different and everyone works at different paces. But just making those little motifs, I think they'd look gorgeous as like, you know, making lots of them, linking them together as bracelets or whatever. So I've got pearl, pearl, spacer, pearl. I'm going to bring that wire back. doesn't matter if you go through the top or round the back, whatever you call it. But I like to do it this way and then I don't have to kind of reposition it as much. I'm holding that pearl close down to the others. Just holding it in place with my thumb. And then as I bring and guide that wire back through, they are quite close together. And my spacer is again sitting on the outward corner. Onto the other side now, so using the left tail end of the wire, I'm going to do a pearl, a pearl, a spacer, and a pearl. And again, I'm going to bring that wire to make that loop, so it's going to go through the pearl which is closest to the centre. I tend to think of it as if it's not the pearl which is in the group of two, then it's the wrong one. And then going to gently guide that pearl down into the centre, hold on to it with my finger and my thumb, pull that wire around, and then I've got, just pull it a little bit tauter, I've got that on the outside too. And they make nice little hearts, I think, at this point. So if you wanted to just make heart-shaped earrings or whatever you could do. I'm then going to take both of those. I'm going to add on one of my pearls onto one end of the wire, so the left or the right. And then I'm going to bring the other wire or the tail end back through. Now, sometimes you might have a little bit of coating on the pearl and just persevere with it. The drill holes are wide and large enough to be able to get both wires through. I'm just going to pull that down little bit by little bit. So gently pulling on one end, gently pulling on the other. And then I've got that in the centre. Adding a pearl onto one side. Adding a pearl onto the other side. And then bringing them both together through one of the spacers. So spacer onto one side, this case being the left. Bringing that right tail end back through. So I'm going through the same, same bead. And then pulling that down. And give a little reposition or a tweak with my fingers if I need to. Yes, Rachel. I don't really remember the programme, but I definitely know the rhyme for the magpies. One for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy, five for silver, six for gold, seven for a secret never to be told. And then I can never remember after that, but I know it's morning, Mr. Magpie. <laughs> I'm now bringing those two ends up. I give it a little pinch just above that spacer. Kind of want to pinch it in the centre so my wrap loop will fit and sit centrally. And then just going to hold on. So what I tend to do first is I do cross them over a little bit. So I've got that little kind of splayed end. And then I'm just pinching and twisting and then drawing it out. Doesn't have to be too neat. Giving it a little twist, little twist, until I've got a couple of inches. Then I'm going to get round nose pliers. 
going to sit it above that acrylic bead, going to bend over that wire into a 90 degree angle. So whatever space is between that bead and that bend is going to be the space I've got to wrap my loop. It doesn't need to be too big. Bring it round like a little scarf. So I'm just going to take it around, above, behind. I do find it easier to do it with my fingers than my tools, but you can do whatever is easiest for you. I'm going to trim off the excess and then with my pliers, I'm just tucking in the wire, being mindful of that little spacer at the top. I'm then going to cut my lengths of chain to whatever lengths I want. You don't have to add three lengths of chain on. You could just add one if you wanted to. Maybe you could do little wrap loops coming off um, with um, your, you know, little pearls or any or something like that. Let me just check on two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So that is my central one. I'm going to take my jump ring, I'm going to open it up, so I'm just taking a lot of surface area on that jump ring and giving it a little twist open. Morning Lisa, I hope you're well. If you're just joining us, these are the Matilda E-rings. I'm then going to add on my chain. And then I'm just taking that through the spacer. And closing it over again. So bringing it gently towards me, making sure those two ends meet. Then all I need to do is add on my earring hook, give it a flip. Slide it on. Job is a good one. So we've got six lovely choices for you today in the colours. We have, let me take you very quickly back over to the website. These are the Matilda Pearl earrings. They are £4.99. pence. They make four pairs of earrings in your kit. So you've got enough to make four in this design. In the buttermilk, the caramel, the lilac, the olive, the powder blue. All the royal blue so you've seen me demo today um, I did powder blue on the silver just now and I also did one of the caramel there for you as well and um, so I hope you like them I hope they were straightforward and the tutorial was easy to follow if you've got any questions at all do drop me a message you can find me usually on Facebook if it's playing it's not been today but you can find me on YouTube we're totally beads on YouTube um, and I also have Natalie Patton, which is my name written there, and it's just jewellery, but it's spelt the English or British or the UK spelling of jewellery. Um, and I'll share all of the tutorials there as well. So you can find me there on YouTube. Um, I'm going to be back with you on Monday. It looks like it's about to just team down outside. I'm going to be back with you on uh, Monday. I think on Monday I'm doing... Um, a little wire pendant with you and I think I'm using a uh, donuts so um or a high goo if you call it that um they're actually I think technically they're called B which is spelled P-I um but I think that's the technical name for these um gonna be using some seed beads a little bit of wire it's a really really straightforward wire make though so please um if it's something new to you then don't be scared just give it a go um or at least watch it and see what you think um I'm also going to be doing a different technique with the bale so there's loads of different ways you can wrap a bale um but I'm going to be doing a way that I haven't done before with uh, Totally Beads. I've done it on the Christmas um, project. We did a little bit of wire macrame, um, but I've never done wire macrame on a live with you. Um, so I'm gonna do a bail, I think, I hope with that. And um, so thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a lovely weekend. If you are affected by the storm, then stay safe. If you are watching and it's very early morning, then, um, Go back to sleep.
absolute dreams. And I'll see you on Monday, everybody. Take care. See you soon.